What's up y'all, welcome to the video. Have you ever wondered how certain games such as Elden Ring or even games such as Jedi Fallen Order are able to implement dodge rolling for evasive maneuvers in their combat systems? Well, today I'm going to be showing you a very simple way that you could do so in Unreal Engine 5. So with that, let's get right into it. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our assets and wherever our knight or whatever character you're using, wherever you're keeping all those animations, we're going to go there. And I already went ahead and made some montages for our different rolling animations. We are going to be using two different methods for this video. One is going to be for an in-place animation, and the other is going to be for a root motion animation. So we're going to be able to go over the how those uh, differentiate. Now, if you don't know how to make an animation montage, it's very simple. Just right-click any animation you want. Go to create and a montage. I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. But after that, you can just drag it to wherever you are storing your montages. Now, before we get into coding this up in C++, we're going to want to do one thing to our animation montages. And that is going to be to set an animation notify or a montage notify to at the place wherever we want our dodge to officially end. And this is just so we have a little bit more control of when we're going to be able to dodge next. So rather than waiting for the entire animation to finish, we'll be able to control it more through triggering an animation montage notify. So if you right click, go to add notify, montage notify, and then gonna wanna name it dodge so that we can differentiate that a little bit more in code. And now once this event is triggered, it's going to look for the notify name, which is dodge. And we're gonna be coding that up in C++, but we need to have that set in the montage first. But once it triggers that and looks to see that the name is dodge, we can then allow for more dodging rather than using a different event, which is called handle on montage end. So I'm gonna to wanna to do that for our other animation here. And consider it like right there. Also name that dodge. And now that we have those montages set up, we're going to go into our C++ classes and we're going to open up our hack slash character files. So let's get right into that. Okay, so first looking into the header file of our character, we're gonna to want to add a reference to our dodge montage. So we'll just copy paste these other references here. You and a montage instead of a heavy attack, we're just gonna call it dodge montage. And this little uh, macro over here saying new property, this is just saying we can edit the, the value for this animation montage anywhere. We can access it, read, write from blueprints, and it's just going into the animation category. Now, one more thing we're gonna wanna do is add a method for handling dodging. And we're also gonna want a Boolean to say whether or not we're dodging. So we'll add void dodge and bool is dodging. So that is everything we're going to need in our header file. So let's get right into the CPP file of the character so we can implement this method right here. Now looking at our CPP file, we're going to scroll down to wherever our input is and we're going to actually add a binding for our dodge method before we go and implement that. So we'll just copy paste this, change the name to dodge, and then make it reference our dodge method. We can now go and edit our input settings in Unreal, but first we're gonna go and actually implement this method right here. So if you scroll down to wherever that is defined, uh, looks like it's right over here. Now we can go and implement this. Him, him, sin. 
Okay, so what we are doing here is we are first making sure that our player can dodge, and we don't want them to be currently attacking while they are dodging. We want them to be able to jump, or we, which means that they are on the ground, so they can't dodge mid-air. And this can jump method right here is actually just something that is a protected value from the um, base character class, so we already have all of the code for that defined for us. And this is attacking method right here. Uh, we defined that ourselves, and all this is really doing is checking on whether or not our attack montages are currently playing. And if they are currently playing, then we were going to set that to true. So that goes for either light attacks or heavy attacks. Now, going back into our dodge method, we also want to make sure that we are only dodging if the player is not currently dodging. And after you've done that, we then make sure we have a valid animation instance, set dodging to true, and then play our montage. Now, if we just played the montage itself with our in-place animation, then it would not work. So if you instead go and launch the character after playing the montage as well, you will then have your character move at the same time. So what this method is doing right here, it is getting our launch velocity. So we're getting the actor's forward vector, multiplying it by the force value, and then also letting these overrides stay true so that there's no conflicts with um, our character movement. So now that we have that all set, let's go back into Unreal and test this. And once you have made it back into Unreal and hit the compile button over here, we're now going to go in our input settings from our project settings. Go down to input, and we're going to add a new action mapping. And just name this dodge. And we're going to bind this to the E key, but you can do whatever key that you feel is best for your dodging in your game. Now, once we have that input set, we're going to go into our blueprints and we're going to go to our character blueprint, which derives from our C++ class. If you don't know how to generate this, we're going to go into our C++ character file. And if you right click it, you can then create a blueprint class and this is going to have that blueprint derived from here. So opening that blueprint is going to be data only. So you're just going to be able to change all of these data points here, which can handle like your location, rotation, scale, and all of our references to our animation montages. Since we are first testing this out with our in-place animation montage, we're going to go and set it to that. Now, if we go and test this, you can see we can roll. However, it's not letting us dodge a second time and our animation is a little slow. So if we go into our animation montage, Go into our in place right here. We're going to speed this up a little bit just to scale it with our velocity. Now we still have the issue with our dodging not being able to happen twice and that is because we are not resetting our boolean for when our dodge animation ends. So we're going to go back into our code and implement that so that we can have our uh, character dodge more than once. Alrighty, now back in the header for our character, we're going to scroll down all the way over here. And we already have this set from our combo attacks videos, but if you have this U function set right here, this is going to be our event handler for when a montage notify is triggered in our montages. So what this takes is, you can name this whatever you want, but it's going to take in an F name, that's going to be the name of the notify, and it's also going to take an F branching point notify payload. And we don't really use all that all that much, especially for this case, but that is also something that must go into the event. Now, if you go back into the CPP and you find your begin play method, in order to trigger this or at least bind the event handler to the event, um, we're going to need to get an anim instance from our mesh and make sure that's valid. And once you do that, you're going to bind it to this event right here on play montage notify begin. And you're going to go to add dynamic it to this object and you're going to bind the handle on montage notify begin right there so that should be all bound and once the montage notify is triggered it's going to call this method right here and if we go to where that is already set in our file we're going to make a few edits to this so we're going to first check that the notify name has something to do with dodging so check for dodging our a and notify name 
string. I'm gonna wanna convert this to a string because an F name and a string are not the same. And this is equal to dodge. If you remember from when we were setting the notifies in our montages, we did set the names to dodge, so we're gonna be looking for that. And if it hits this, it has that name, it's going to reset the boolean of is dodging to false. And we'll just have a little else statement right here. So now if we compile this and go back and test it Unreal, we should be able to dodge multiple times. All right, and if we go back and test this now, should be able to dodge more than once. Now, if you notice with uh, us just launching the character with an in-place animation, you will notice that it does look a little janky. And if all you have is in-place motion uh, animations, then this could still work. You can play around with the launch velocity and make it look fairly nice. But what I'm about to show you is how to do this with just root motion alone. And the distance is going to be pretty much determined by the animation itself. And it's going to have the camera follow it. So it's going to look a little bit more natural and you don't have to do as much calculations with that. So if we go back into our code, and we go into our dodge method, all we really have to do is just play the animation montage and we can just comment out this character launching right here. And once that is compiled, we're gonna go back into our character blueprint. We're going to replace the in-place montage with our root motion, which is just our night falling roll montage. Compile and save that. And then now we should be able to check this out. And we are gonna to wanna to speed this up as well so we can have some quicker dodging. And now we have some nice dodge rolling in any direction and it doesn't look as janky as the in-place method did. So there you have it. We now have our basic dodge mechanic functional with two different methods depending on the type of animations you are using, which can include both in-place and root motion animations. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to like and comment. And if you would like to stay up to date with my other tutorials, be sure to subscribe as well. Until then, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.